Tomorrow, the British government will roll out the red carpet tainted with the blood of innocent young children of Yemen for Saudi's crown prince and de facto leader, Mohammed bin Salman. If you listen to Britain's Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, who has called the prince dubbed MBS a remarkable young man, you'd think the prince is promoting reform in Saudi Arabia and peace in neighboring Yemen. In reality, he is doing neither. About the way the Russians and Assad's regime have behaved. But I put it to you, there's another war going on in the Yemen, away from sure. the cameras, where thousands of people have been killed. Sure. There have been bombings of weddings and funerals. Millions of people have been displaced and are extremely hungry. There's the starvation theory there. And that is being caused by sure. British jets uh, with help from British advisors flown by the Saudi government. Despite Prince Salman's ambitious reform rhetoric and his stated desire to transform the country economically and politically, repression and human rights violation have increased in the kingdom under his leadership. Just the other day, a leader of the mosque was arrested for criticising the Saudi leadership. A month back, five Pakistanis were beheaded for rape without any clear evidence of their wrongdoing. This was to show Saudis that the monarchy is following Islamic law. In reality, it really isn't, and it's just an exercise in appeasement of the public to hide Saudi dealings with America and Israel. As we know, Saudi Arabia has never practiced a true Islamic law. It's always been a strange form of Wahhabism, which they created along with British agents. Teresa will be wearing her dog chain and bowing to Prince Salman. She will sign the country's security over. No doubt, Teresa will sign further weapons to Saudi Arabia to carry on their assault on the innocent children of Yemen and armed militant Wahhabi Daesh groups in Syria. Some, something the Saudis have been doing since the Syrian uprising because Saudi Arabia follows America and to the Saudi monarchy along with the US, Assad must go. My policy from the beginning has been that uh, President Assad uh, had lost credibility. So I ask you my fellow Londoners, if you are prepared to protest against Donald Trump visiting the UK, why aren't you preparing to protest against Mohammed bin Salman. We should be in no doubt that the arms that may be agreed tomorrow could feed wars and repression in the future. As such, we should be banning those sales for our own security as much as anything else. Britain's relationship with Saudi Arabia has increased in importance since the government decided to end free trade with our closest neighbours. Now we are desperate to deepen ties with non-European countries willing to buy our goods and services. The UK already sells the Saudis billions pounds worth of military hardware and the government wants to step up their order. Saudi military intervention in Yemen civil war has led to thousands of civilians dying and famine. According to Amnesty International, the Saudi attacks appear to have deliberately targeted civilians and deliberately targeted hospitals, schools, markets and mosques. Mohammed bin Salman hasn't been a bystander in these attacks. He has overseen the three-year bombing campaign since day one. Meanwhile, the leader of Yemen's Ansarullah movement has vowed that from now on, the Yemenis will retaliate against Saudi Arabia and Emirates' aggression by targeting those countries. You are bombarding Sana'a with its Riyadh and Abu Dhabi. You attack Yemen's presidential palace in Sana'a. Our ballistic missiles reach Yamama Palace in Riyadh. You attack our infrastructure. We will retaliate it. An eye for an eye. We will use all legitimate means to defend our people and our country and to confront your aggression.